Welcome everyone to day one of Ignite. I am so thrilled to be here with you for these next three days where we are going to cover the dimensions, the distortion and the direction. Welcome to Ignite. My name is Lizette Marais. I am the creator of Arise and the founder of the Arise Academy. And dimensions are really where the conversation begins for the Arise Academy because we are focused on multi-dimensional mastery. Multi-dimensional mastery starts with understanding the dimensions and they are explained in so many different ways, in so many different forms throughout um, science, religion, mystic uh, traditions, as well as esoteric. Um, dimensions are something that have been tried to explain. As a natural multi-dimensional person, I will tell you that most of those definitions and the ways that they are explained are in themselves confusing. And so I'm hoping in this lesson that we lay down an enlightened foundation, a fundamental framework of what dimensions truly is in a way that you understand that you are these dimensions, that these dimensions are happening right here, right now, and right within us. And when we do, we have a whole new appreciation of what is possible, why things are maybe the way they are, but also how they can totally be transformed. Now, of course, I speak from experience, and I've been teaching transformation a long time. I started as a coach in 2006, started as a mentor in 2012, and it was only when I actually went into this essential ecosystem experience did I truly experience myself as the dimensions. So let me break it down for you like this. First of all, there is no zero dimension. So there is no space or time ever that there's going to be absolutely nothing. And this is why in sacred scripture, it says that God is omnipotent and ever present because there is no such thing as a zero dimension. The only zero dimension that people have tried to put on me as a, as a theory, as a dogma is black holes, but black holes are a theory, an idea scientists to put things that they cannot explain, which is of course quite a bit when you look at divinity. So, we start with the first dimension. There is a zero access point, but no zero dimension. The first dimension is where it's at. And I want to start with our foundation as that dimension is you. That dimension is me. And that is you and me in the form of a seed, a sperm, a spark. Almost every religion around the world and every faith agrees that all of mankind is sacred and made in the image of, right? So that is that precious seed that you are. Second, what happens in the second dimension is you arrive as the seed and you get immersed into your mother's waters. Into your mother's waters. And as you come in as that perfect little seed, your mother's womb is the perfect container and knows exactly what you need, provides everything you need. And the intelligence in the sperm or the spark or the seed of you knows exactly how to grow. As long as there is that continual give and take of what it needs, it's going to grow and it's going to develop into something beautiful. And then we arrive in the third dimension so we have you, you have mother's waters or the womb and you have an, uh, the other, right? So now there's other people here. So now I need a personality. Now I need to have, um, have this identity. Identity is the word I'm looking for. Okay. So identity which then we're going to also use a personality. What's interesting is that till here, we kind of know this is what happens. And I got to watch this process right up close and personal with my sister uh, recently and uh, my, my little nephew, Gabriel, and my namesake and my heir and all of it, my little precious little one arrived three months ago, yesterday, okay? So I got to watch this real up and close and I will tell you there is nothing more sacred than to hold that little baby 
and watch him and his intelligence just eating and taking everything his body needs, watching his mama taking care of him. It is the most incredible thing. So how does this understanding that this is what creation process is really about and what does that have to do with transformation? Well, that has to do with a couple of things. The first thing is that normally what happens when we talk about the distortion, which we'll go further into tomorrow, but what happens straight away already in here is we forget the mother's waters. We forget those waters and we confuse it, if you will, with our body. And this was very interesting. I was watching an interview with Terence Howard and he was bringing forward his revolutionary work around atoms and, and how it actually works as well. And he was saying that his earliest memory was him falling from heaven or coming in as a soul, but he also had memories of him in the womb. And he remembered the first time that he saw his hand and when he saw his hand, he thought it was something else. He thought it was some other being. And I thought to myself, wow, isn't that just what happens? Is that we think that this body, this extra thing that grew inside my mother's womb is actually separate. And I totally forget about mama, right? And I see this body as a separate thing that I now have to take care of, that I have to exercise, that I have to feed. And there is this sense of separation and there is this forgetfulness as we forget the womb and the environment from which we came. This is very interesting. And when we arrive here and we have this identity and this personality, that's where then the ego installs. But if we can understand this as essence, right? And then this as body. And then normally what happens is we will have essence, body, and ego, right? Or personality. And we are not split. Not in that way, okay? We are one being. Now, where this gets really interesting is maybe you have heard that we are in this shift moving from carbon to crystalline, crystalline waters. And we are going to eventually become light. But whoever is saying this, they don't really have that full understanding, again, that deeper uh, embodiment of what is this ascension about because the light is already you that it was already that already came in like you have always been the light you are the light first then you are the light in the water then you were the light the mother right so the carbon is actually light and we don't think of it that way because many of us if not all of us have been programmed to kind of self abandon or self reject this carbon, or I idealize it to an extent that I will do anything for my body, not thinking about the essence or the soul of the matter or the soul in the other. So this is where the balance comes in, but this is critical. So if we have understood that we are carbon and this is the carbon, uh, the carbon and I have crystalline waters which I have and I am light and where this really really gets interesting is when we move into the fourth dimension everyone wants to get to the fifth dimension because in the fifth dimension that's where unity lives that's where oneness is that's where the love is so everyone wants to get to the fifth dimension but before we get to the fifth dimension which is also here and also readily available we must pass through the fourth dimension. And the fourth dimension is truly where the transformation takes place. So if you're on board with me all of this way through, then this is going to absolutely light up your heart. Here we have the fourth dimension. The fourth dimension just means there's four parts to it. <coughs> in every ancient tradition, in every indigenous culture, in all of the peoples that walked in harmony with earth, the shamanic, if you will, they all knew that air, water, earth, and fire were the four elements 
that created life, the four elements or the four dimensions. And when you take that down to the human anatomy, you and I, what do we see? Well, I'm carbon. And this is where a lot of us get stuck. And when I was researching and Spirit was sending me these different books, these different books of knowledge, one of the very important books that came to, for me was the Kabbalion, which was the translation, uh, it's called the Three Initiates, and they speak of the Emerald Tablet. And in the Emerald Tablet, they have different principles. And the very first principle is that the universe is mind. And we are finding out more and more in quantum physics that consciousness creates. <coughs> in other words, that life is like this plasma. And I've actually had the opportunity to see the plasma and to see the choices that people are projecting and therefore creating that reality. And it's incredible. So when we can start understanding that that's actually how it functions is that you as an essence, whatever you are projecting or seeing or imprinting onto the waters of life, then that is what is manifesting. Then it starts making sense because you, the air, are the mental body. The mental body. This is how thoughts become things. Mental body is all about our thought. We also have our emotional body. And that is our feeling. Now the beautiful thing is a lot of your emotional intelligence is coming from, that is in your waters, we are 70% waters, they're in your waters, but they've also come from your mother's waters. They've come from the DNA. And the DNA has also been made up of your father's seed. So you and your ancestors or you and your lineage, you are already in one. It's all in you, right? But also this incredible spark, this light of the divine is in you too, right now. And so when we understand that this is our mental thought, but how do we think about ourselves, right? And how we've been told to think about ourselves. The two things I've noticed from the lower matrix that they're always kind of asking or making us enter into self-doubt is, are you intelligent enough? Are you beautiful enough, right? And so what's amazing is that as we think in our heart, so are we, the physical body. That was Master Yeshua, right? And it's also in Proverbs, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So we become the physical experience, the physical manifest on the earth plane, on the third dimension. But in the fourth dimension, we have access to the fire. Now the fire is where we understand that the minute the discovery of fire happened, there was this evolutionary jump. And I believe we are here again because we are fire. A, wom a woman or man that is alive and passionate on fire about his life, that is your fire. That is your go get up and go. But what it also is, is the innate vitality, life force that you brought in as a seed. And that is never going away. That is not out of style until that seed then leaves the body and transits into the afterlife, right? So right now I have access to this fire. And it was in understanding my fire, understanding my passion, understanding this, that I started to understand that this is my energetic field. This is my energetic body. I have energy that I can move in my energetic body to do what? To transmute. It is the power of transmutation. When I went on to my three month experience, this was only confirmed because it wasn't a diet. And yet I was able to lose 26 kilos in three months. And why was that? Why I'm not dieting. I only took out a, a couple of really toxic things that I knew were toxic. I knew my body was going through a big shift. I was only supporting my body to go through the shift. 
and the body made the shift and a lot of it was inflammation a lot of it was trauma a lot of it was deep loss and regret it was the positioning if you look at my older photos you notice that i actually stand like this my chest was way up here and i was of course like a block and all of these were the unconscious layers and layers of trauma and hurt that i had not addressed but i addressed them in these three months and it was so beautiful and pain-free and easeful it's a commitment it's a decision but once you know it's in you and that is the power of understanding these dimensions as i'm explaining it to you in this framework is that it's not outside of you it truly is in you so i knew as a teacher that once i would get to the point where i could share this with people that the only thing i truly have to do is to support them to create the container and that container was given to me in 2016 um, called Arise, 2015 actually, Arise, Arise, and that is an acronym, again for the fourth dimension, the first dimension, Awaken, Awaken that I am spirit, I am essence, inner body, infinite, I'm never going to die as an essence, I will go on, and um, there's other videos that I'll share some of the experience I have in those out-of-body experiences, but to know that this life force is within me and that is truly what is making the shift but also the feminine work of remembering remembering my mother's waters remembering where i came from remembering my inner child remembering my true potential and remembering also the limitations that got me stuck and integrating that the limitation of being in a single body in a single point of time in one place but also harmonizing it with the fullness of my potential is in integration. And once I am in peace with this, I surrender. I surrender. I let go. I allow. And why? Because then in the fifth dimension, what emerges is the true me. I never could have imagined that I would be this weight again, that I would look the way I look, that I would feel the way I look, that I would have this much energy again in my life because I was old at 30. That's what I was told happens. I got married at 21. I'd been married already nine years by the time I was 30 and I already was acting like an old lady. I was getting joint pains. I was getting hip pains. I was overweight, 85 kilos for a long, long time in my life. And this understanding of dimensions is truly the game changer when we understand who we are, when we understand the potential. And I know that probably no one has ever told you this. So a lot of people would gaslight me for a long time and say, you know what, you must be making it out. And that's why I love that I took these two years to really, instead of like coming out and say, hey, I lost the weight, I'm feeling great. I wanted to see, is this sustainable? Is it just with the maintenance of loving this essence, taking this fifth dimensional understanding and knowing that this essence is within me, that I am not separate from my mother and father, that I have a mother and father that holds me still in this moment as I become the full expression of the essence that always is that always was and this becomes the new discovery and the new unfolding i love in the arise academy that we are welcoming you, you as a, a master because it's all within you and as a student because i know for a fact that no one ever taught me how to be free no one ever taught me how to be myself. And why that is, is because everyone else has an agenda for me. And the good news is when we take this kind of holistic, loving approach to ourself, then we get to get into the driver's seat and we get to give gladly what we have with generosity and grace, but nothing needs to be taken from us. And we do not need to feel as many of us have been feeling for a long time. So, welcome to Ignite. I hope you really, really have enjoyed our first session and I really hope that um, you join us live today if you can. And if you're catching this on the replay, then please come and join us at the Facebook group. 
where we continue this incredible conversation about multidimensional mastery at the Arise Academy. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.